three, two, one. You ready? You're listening to the Real Pineapple Podcast Network. so much for listening. This is The Real Pineapple. This is your humble host, Hunter. Hope you're all having a great night so far. So, I was going to go to bed, but I realized, oh, that's right, that Moon Knight trailer is debuting today, or tonight. So, been kind of waiting and waiting, and finally it dropped, which, hell yeah. So, I'm actually really excited to see, uh, just to kind of get into the trailer here. So, it's only a two-minute trailer. It's not a whole lot to break down, but there are a couple things I noticed that I went, okay, this, this this is interesting. So if you are a fan of the character, you know. So if you remember in the comics, he originally is left for dead, um, uh, left for dead in the desert, and uh, on a mercenary mission, if memory serves, and basically he's at the like by the head or by. The statue of the Egyptian moon god, uh, was like uh, uh, Kamsu, I think is how you say it, and that's how he goes to get ahead and gets his powers. It seems like they could go that way, just in the way that he's seeing the visions and everything. What I love about this is that this feels like, and again, I, <laughs> I again, just taking swings here. It looks like the MCU's version of of uh, Memento. It feels like we're going to be seeing so much of the show uh, through Mark's eyes, but I feel like there's going to be a lot of gaps in the uh, in the actual shows. And I think as the show goes along, it'll go kind of almost flash fla- uh, flash backwards or go backwards and <coughs> pardon me and fill in those gaps. So I'm I'm really curious how the show is going to be filmed because it seems so all over the place, which, you know, it should be, because in case it wasn't obvious uh, obvious from the trailer, uh, our main character has uh, DID, uh, uh, Dissociative Identity Disorder. So what I love about the way that the trailer is being shown to us is that we already know two of his personalities. Uh, Mark Spector is the character's identity before becoming Moon Knight or developing any of his other identities so that's like that's the floor is uh is mark specter so we know we have that we, so we know we have mark specter that that's clear that's obvious that's our floor the fact later on uh he's taught uh he's interacting with a character named layla on the phone where he goes ahead and discovers that he's hidden a phone in his room and he's talking to this character layla Here's where I'm going to go ahead and kind of take a swing because she calls him Steven. So Steven Grant is another one of his identities. Uh, that's the identity that funds Moon Knight's expensive uh, lifestyle as far as being a crime fighter. So what's interesting is that after his, uh, after he's created, he goes ahead and plays Wall Street and turns the money that Mark has saved into a, like a fortune, which kind of makes him, uh, you know, similar to Bruce Wayne in that way. What I find interesting or something I love about the trailer is I want to say it's like at the one, it's like around the one uh, 30-ish mark, we see, uh, 134 mark, we see presumably Stephen running. It looks like he has a bag, uh, has a bag in and a, uh, uh, in his hand, or like a duffel bag. So maybe that's fill, uh, filled with earnings. Maybe he gambled and got some money that way because he's smiling. He doesn't look terrified. He looks like excited. So I'm wondering if that's when we get the introduction of Stephen Grant. Um, but to go back real quick to the to the Layla thing. Again, big swing here. I think that might be Layla Miller. So, in case you're not familiar with who Layla Miller is, Layla Miller, if you have listened to the podcast for a little bit of time, I've been saying since I saw that trailer, (laughs) the first trailer for WandaVision, I was like, we're getting House of M. They may not call it House of M, but we are clearly, clearly, clearly leading to some version 
of House of M. And I think Multiverse of Madness could be where we get that. What, how that looks uh, and how the MCU looks after we get out of Multiverse of Madness, I'll be very curious to see. But if the Layla that's calling him is Layla Miller, uh, she's a she's a mutant, if you remember, from the from the House of M storyline. And one of the things that's important to where I think they could be going is that she retains memories uh, from the prior prior universe that she's in that gets destroyed. So she's actually able to bring uh, to basically grant people their memories back by clearing their mind, uh, like pseudo uh, pre, uh, was it pre, uh, pre, uh, precognition. I think is what the term is, but basically she can go ahead and predict what happens in the future because her prior self, I guess you'd say her variant in this case, um, existed 80 years in the future. So she's able to like draw from that variant still. That's how powerful she is and get information. But then the other thing, she's able to resurrect dead beings, which I mean, that could be, that could be very helpful while she just resurrects uh, Tony Stark and Black Widow. <laughs> Oh God! How <laughs> sorry? How pissed off would some people be if they just went boop? There you go. But she's able to resurrect dead beings, uh, heal people, and she's very uh, she's very in tune with magic. So if you think about it, if there is a place to go ahead and kind of make that reveal of her being a mutant, you could do it as a mid credit, or maybe in the finale of the show. Like maybe things are just happening around. Mark and he's not aware of, you know, what, what is happening, um, or what force is involved. Maybe she's just kind of working behind the scenes, kind of Agatha, uh, you know, Agatha style. There's a world where that's happening. Um, also the fact that she, that he goes, why did you call me Mark? That feels like such an, I feel like they're clearly hinting at her, knowing more than she does than she knows just off of a, a basic phone call she's clearly seems in tune so i that's my big swing i think that's layla miller uh i hope <laughs> i hope that's what uh that's who she is but the other big thing is too i mean how do you tie this in this uh, i mean you could tie this into so many um you could tie this into so many things. You could tie this into Love and Thunder, perhaps. She shows up there. Um, we already had, you know, Madripoor introduced in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So we're getting closer to mutants showing up proper. She could be in Miss Marvel, for for uh, for all we know. Um, there's a lot of places you could take that character if Layla is who, uh, who I think it is. So, or who I think she is. So I'm really curious if they're going to go ahead and go there. The other thing, uh, Jake Lockley, he's another one of, uh, Mark's identities. He's this, uh, like this cabbie who kind of keeps his ears to the, you know, ears to the pavement and gathers information. So, you know, his intel is actually really important to Moon Knight as far as him being a vigilante. So I feel like that's who he is at the 119 mark where it looks like he is being, um, where he's gathering information on uh, Arthur, uh, on Arthur uh, 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 Harrow, who's played, uh, or Harrow, played by Ethan Hawke. And here's the thing, I'll, uh, the little bit I know about Moon Knight, because I've read the character a decent amount, but I'm not super, I'm not overly familiar with him like I am with other characters. I'm not familiar with his rogues gallery at all. I just know that this guy is like an evil scientist, if memory serves. So I love his look. It's very simple. Ethan Hawke just looks great. Look at that hair, too. That hair is fucking fucking beautiful. But uh, I love his very cult-like look. Uh, it reminds me a lot of, uh, oh, what's that era that uh, Aaron Paul showed the path? It, it's giving me the path vibes, which I, which I'm like, okay, that's, that's interesting. And the way that all those people without even f- thinking twice about it, just immediately bow, it's like, oh shit. Okay. So it'll be really interesting to see how far uh, his reach is. And going back to the whole, uh, to the whole Jake Lockley thing, the way that he has this look on his face, how he looks terrified and just seeing how all those people around him look kind of like, int- just like, like they're in a trance 
And if you notice behind him, there's a guy with a with a with a with a gun there. So I'm I'm, I'm curious about what it, maybe they go ahead and give the uh, give a uh, uh, hero some powers, perhaps. Um, maybe he's just a scientist. Maybe it's just that 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 cut and dry. But uh, I love that shot of Ethan Hawke in this. It's just enough to make you go, oh, there's something there's something sinister going on. Last thing I will go ahead and throw out is uh, the newest version or the newest identity uh, for Mark Spector is this uh, character I know called uh, 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 his identity. It's called Mr. Knight. So he's this character who just dresses from white top to bottom, shoes, tie, all that. But he has a, uh, he also wears white gloves and then a white mask with the outline of Crescent Moon. So it's, it's almost like a, almost like a street level version of uh of of moon knight's costume i'm wondering if that's him at the like at the 125 mark it looks like he might just it, like he might be perhaps an institution the way he's slapping himself but i think uh especially with the guy looking at him looking like he's kind of wearing like a uh something like uh like a doctor would wear as far or uh, someone working at a hospital as far as the color of the tone there looks like a teal but i don't know i feel like that could be misdirect he could have came in as mr uh he could have came in as mr knight or maybe began talking like mr knight once he goes ahead and gets there so i could easily see them kind of pulling that that swerve. The last thing I do want to bring up is the, uh, the the stuff in the stuff in Egypt looks fantastic. Just the little hints of things where uh, at the one twenty uh, at the one uh, at the one thirty mark where I mentioned I think that's uh, where I think that's Stephen Grant just seeing the uh, the shadow of the moon like following him almost like it's his, like like it's his destiny. Subtle thing, but I absolutely love that and. Uh, Last thing, last thing I'll point out. The transformation of him becoming Moon Knight looks fucking awesome. It looks like, uh, uh, it, it looks similar to that, uh, to what the, um, the villains or the bad guys was the Celestials, uh, used against, uh, Angel Angel Lee's character in, uh, Eternals, kind of how they, like, wrap her up. I love that effect. It's a very cool looking effect. And then we see Moon Knight punching the shit out of that thing that was following him earlier. And then we get the the shot at the minute 46 mark. The costume looks fucking awesome. It looks mummified, but just modern enough. I I, I love it. I, I get Shazam vibes off it. I I, um, I love the look of the costume. So and the, the glowing the glowing eyes as uh as he comes towards the screen. Oh, love it, love it, love it, love it. But uh, okay, I lied. One last thing: the use of Kid Cudi's day and night, considering how open uh Kid Cudi has been about his mental health. It's such a nice remix. That goes so well with this character and with the trailer. I'm I'm just hyped for this, and we get this in about six weeks because uh, Moon Knight premieres on March 30th. That's a that's a Wednesday. Remember, that's kind of what Disney's uh, Disney's rolling with now with these MCU shows are premiering on Wednesday. So hell yeah, bring bring this on, Oscar Isaac. He can go ahead and get that taste of x-men apocalypse out of our mouths <laughs> and, pre- and we'll pretend that movie doesn't exist once the show comes out but yeah march 30th give me more of this let's let's fucking go but moon knight everybody uh what do you think about it like what what are your theories i'm i'm looking forward to hearing what y'all have to say but you can follow yours truly on the twitter at j hunter real pineapple you can follow scott on twitter at nearman the first don't forget to like share and subscribe you can find us on soundcloud apple and google Podcasts, podbean stitcher and iHeartRadio, spotify amazon music to name a few spots at the real pineapple and don't forget to like both our gaming pages at the real pineapple that's r-e-e-l pineapple and real pineapple games uh and on top of that you can find me on twitch.tv slash j hunter real pineapple and <laughs> lastly you can find me now on letterboxd at uh under black shazam i'm actually going through and starting to log all the reviews we've done and 
uh, do some lists and some other things. So yeah, if you have Letterbox, follow me on there. I look forward to talking to y'all and engaging with you on there. But thank you so much for listening, everyone. We'll have reviews up soon for the tragedy of Macbeth, as well as the lost daughter. Um, and some other stuff come down the pipeline, but everyone, thank you so much again for your support. Stay safe out there. Wear a mask. Take care of each other. Ah, stay safe out there, everyone, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Happy MLK Junior Day.